move over to America and we're just going to go into the couple of teams that we know that could definitely be coming fives, uh, have fifth members coming in and we've got a good idea of who could be. But outside of a couple of teams, it's really difficult to try and predict. Um, oh, yeah. We'll go to 100 Thieves first. So we know that Kenny Farrow and Octane are already there. These guys are going to have the pick of the bunch here, surely, Lando. Yeah, like, I, I really like the, the basis that they have. And granted, while well, everyone's kind of waiting for September 19th, it's just a matter of, okay, like, which guys are going to become available once we know 100% of this format's going to be in play. But I think they have a great basis, at least up to this point. Like I said, we talked about Octane, Kenny, and Pharaoh. To me, the most difficult position that um, is pretty much out there right now is to have a top-level SMG player. Considering buyouts for a lot of contracts that I am aware of as well, it's, it's especially pricey mm-hmm. when it comes to finding top level mm-hmm. SMGs. But uh, at least for for Hunter Two, like I said, they got Kenny, who is regarded as the MVP of World War Two. Pharaoh, a solid up and coming talent, also provides the search and destroy. Octane, who to me is still a top three AR, despite the rough stint that he had on Opti Gaming for a number of different reasons. But uh, one guy who I really want to see get added to this team, and one role that I think is going to be super important for five v five if it does come about is going to be the in-game leader role because you talk about now guiding four other players rather than just three because the IGL, when all this stuff is going on, when it comes into preparation, it's another person, it's another voice, it's another guy walking around the map. I think the IGL role is going to become just as important, if not more important. So I, I think JCAP would be great. Everyone's been saying Karma as well. And then I feel like another, another position that could be looking at along with an IGL for 100T would probably be just another top level SMG player, or maybe even a flex to go along with uh, with JCap, or actually maybe even an AR. I, I, there's so many potential roles yeah. that you could be looking at, but uh, I, I guess probably a, more of an AR flex type position. JCap was great as a flex throughout World War II, but uh, yeah, man, that the AR category is starting to get a little bit scary out there. Yeah, and it, I mean there was a, a couple of whispers of maybe Slasher jumping into that position. That'd be uh, scary. That yeah. would be a terrifying team. What can, can he Octane and Slasher on the same team for and one? You could also maybe argue too that Jacob and Slasher obviously in Black Ops 3 were uh, world champions together and then also placed second in IW and they had a teammate who plays quite a bit like Kenny, which is John back then. Mm-hmm. So you could argue maybe the roles or maybe even the play styles would match up very well too. Yeah, and I'm sure that Slasher had an interview and said that Cap was probably his favorite teammate of all time. So I, yeah. I think realistically, that that could definitely work. I mean, you put Slasher in any team, it's going to work. I, I mean, he was one of the best players last year easily, but I, 100 Thieves really do have the pick of the bunch. I mean, Karma, Cap, Slasher, anybody like that, they could get in. This team will do fantastic. As I said, they've got that base that we mm-hmm. know can do well. Uh, quickly going to move on to Optic now. So... The rumored lineup currently is Dashi, TJ, Krim, and Skump, of course. Um, that's been doing the rounds for a good few weeks. But then we've seen something on Reddit to say that they'd already picked up three, or, or negotiated three contracts, I think was the word. Yeah. What? I, I mean, does that mean that they picked up a fifth, or does that mean they've negotiated somebody out? It, a lot of questions were asked. Yeah. But from these four, what do you th- think the fifth could be? I mean, they've already got Karma on their books. Whether he would jump back into that team after the fallout that we've seen, obviously having issues primarily with Skump by the sounds of things. Mm-hmm. Saying that, they'd they, they be playing Blackout together, so it, it mustn't be that bad. He could definitely slot into that team potentially, even after that fallout. Methods is still potentially under contract with Optic as well. I don't know if you've got any other ideas of who could potentially be going into that green wall roster. Um, yeah, like I would love to say that, like methods could just easily slide back into this team. From what I have heard, he's no longer under contract with them. Mm-hmm. Um, of course that's, you know, speculation still, but, um, yeah, like, you, you, like for, I feel like for this team, considering of course that Dashi and TJ are both on the roster, you could kind of slide around a few pieces mm-hmm. like to make room for certain players. Uh, I, Skump's obviously going to be, you know, that your aggro sub, they're going to try to really base around him and Krim six this year. And the major question for me, you're going to have Dashy hopefully as their main IR. I, I, I pray to God they put Dashy in a role where he's meant to be at and not, and don't just think those stats were for nothing, right? Yeah. So Crim6 then would either become the secondary AR or he could be a flex. And depending on what he wants to do, um, I feel like it's where they go from here. It's going to be probably a little bit more difficult to find a solid flex, especially if Gunless is off the table. So you could be saying, well, hey. Another main, main AR potentially could be the, the way to go. But to me, it's going to be really based off of what does Crim6 want to do and what should Crim6 be doing at, at, at the same cost as well? Where does he feel most comfortable? And then they can kind of work in the pieces from there. But mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I feel like with this Optic roster, they've got a, a strong basis in certain moments. Um, Dash is obviously going to be a, a great slayer when it comes down to the AR role. So 
like I said, depending on how 5v5 works and, and how certain positions uh, kind of roam throughout the map, I, I think a flex would be the most ideal. Mm-hmm. Um, but you, you never know. They've got a strong basis in certain roles. And if, they got, if, if these guys turn up, I think they could actually be a really solid team. Yeah, definitely. I, I mean, what, what what else could we expect from Optic? They're, they're putting together a good roster here. And it's not necessarily, you know, when you talk about the Dynasty roster that they had, it's not like right. the names aren't exactly as... You don't want to say it's it's the huge top top players again, but I don't want to argue against TJ. Obviously, he's he's won a, a few events and Crimson's Cup had a poor year last year. So I think this right. team is going to slip under the radar a little bit. Of course, they'll always be talked about in conversation in terms of win events because it's optic. They could mm-hmm. have they could have four Chris Tons on the roster and they'll probably still be talked about as a team <laughs> that go win an event. Probably not. But at the same time, you know, I, I think this roster may be underestimated at times, and I think it's going to be one of those that could cause problems for a lot of teams. Moving on to another that uh, I heard a, a whisper of. I don't know how true it is. Phase attach Zuma replays and Priester fifth coming in potentially hook. Okay, you said to me when we were discussing this that you liked the sound of that. I do. Yeah, hook was to me definitely turning up toward the end of the year, um, especially at chance. I feel like every time I was watching an MV game, he was going off along with Chino. So I, I feel like this roster definitely has a possibility to add a player like Hook to the team. I feel like, what, they've got Attach and Zuma kind of in the SMG categories. You have Priest as a flex, replays as the main AR. I feel like this team definitely, definitely, definitely needs another flex or another assault rifle player to help complement uh, what has been this roster. Because, what, I feel like every phase team probably since, I don't know, what, what Black Ops 3 have had numerous role swaps. And it's been kind of head-scratching from time to time, but I feel like what this team definitely needs is a solid AR player. They need mm-hmm. a dashy type guy, a guy who is going to be there constantly finding kills, even a slasher. If you're talking about Europe, a rated, like someone who is going to dominate around the map with an AR. Yeah. And I feel like who could be that guy? Um, I feel like and brought into this team, he wouldn't clash with anybody. He seems to be a very level-minded guy. Mm-hmm. Um, that was like his role back in Advanced Warfare. Granted, he was only 15 to 16. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, he, he seemed to take... Merit pretty well. And with coming from Halo as well, working with guys like Snipe Down, working with Pistola, he's worked with veterans in the past and he doesn't really seem to have any conflicts whatsoever. So you talk about guys like Replay, Zuma, especially Attach as well. These guys have been around a while. They have a lot to say. And Hook, I think, is going to be willing to hear it. Definitely, definitely. And now, outside of these rosters, we haven't really heard a great deal else apart from teams leaving. And of course, there's that te- <laughs> There's the potential of gunless and formal going in yeah. together and i think it's really going to come down to dis- see where these guys go and what who they go for and then we're just going to see the actual roster mania where it's like well yeah. who gunless and formal decide to try and pick up i mean we know john's part of the conversation but we know there's contract things there as well do they go with right. lg what's gunless's contract on rise there's so many different questions around everybody else that's a thing i mean we we don't know what's going to happen with EU United. We know there's probably going to mm-hmm. be a change. Rise don't seem to be a roster anymore, as said. You know, it looks as if Gunless is left. Slasher doesn't want to know. At this point... TJ could be gone too, yeah. Yeah, well, it's looking like TJ's gone, of course. But I don't know who's going to be on rosters at the end of this now. I, I, I'd i be really interested to see what the roster lock is. Um, I can't imagine it's very late, to be fair. But there's so many teams that are depending on what happens with the gunless and formal situation i feel Mm -hmm. yeah i definitely agree with that like i said you have two super talented players you could argue Mm -hmm. at certain times top five i know gunless was brought up in the conversation top three throughout the entire year which i don't think is crazy by any means um but yeah you kind of have two all-stars essentially wanting to team up with each other and if they aren't able to then every other team wants to have those guys implement implemented in their roster Mm -hmm. and that's the thing too those are two guys who it may not work for your current team like it might not work out from a role point standpoint but you're willing to have your players switch around to basically make formal be your ar make gunless be your flex even if you already have a very well-defined flex he's better than your guys so you're going to move mountains to make sure he's on your team as well so yeah these are two very high class players i mean ever since the what i forget what event it was it was like toward the beginning of world war ii there were already discuss discussions saying that formal wants to play with gunless gunless might be coming to optic formal might be teaming with like there's been so many rumors but it seems that this trade could be going on um like said in my opinion depending on what happens with rise i feel like it'd be a more opportune um position for probably gunless to go over to lg with formal but 
like you said, there, there's so many roster speculations. I've heard every single player on LG, every single player on Rise is going a different direction. So, mm. yeah, like I said, it, it could be a different organization. Who even knows? It could be insane. I, I mean, John, what, does he stay on LG? Does he <laughs> yeah. end up picking up other players? It, yep. There's so many potential rosters in North America after this split. I can't, I can't wait until we actually find out if it is 5v5 for definite. Everyone's sort of thinking that it's going to be at this point. Um, Everyone's going to freak out. It's yeah, and it's just uh, Reddit <laughs> is going to go crazy, by the way. I mean, all the, oh, yeah. the rumored rosters and stuff is going to be insane to watch. I can't wait to see oh. the, the amount of duplicated posts on Reddit as well oh, about yes, like... Yes. Did you guys hear it's 5v5? But there's going to be like at least nine of them with the same title. It's going to be fantastic. Uh, I, I don't want to go Card Game PD after the tweet yesterday. We, we <laughs> like those guys over there, but that was funny. Of course. So, uh, we'll, we'll leave them out of it. We'll leave them out of it. But Lando, thank you very, very much for coming on and discussing this with me. And we'll be back for another video, probably on Rosters very, very shortly. The announcement is on the 19th of September. Make sure you guys catch that one, and we'll be here to talk about that, I'm sure. And we will see you then. Thanks, guys.